Okay, we're back here live inside theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of SAP Sapphire now live in Orlando, Florida, theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise, and we're here with Christoph Struberg from EMC, 15-year veteran at Disney, SAP architect now working yeah. for EMC. That's right. And we have John Appleby, who with, with Bluefin, and I understand that you guys, EMC, Bluefin, and <coughs> IBM, and Optimal Solutions had a HANA race. So, John, tell me a little about how that went down <laughs> and how you guys kind of kind of met. Well, it, this came out of an idea with an SAP marketer, Amit Sinha, uh, who runs the SAP HANA marketing program. He said, wouldn't it be cool to do something that was customer-centric and showed how in front of the customer we could move a customer from a, a regular traditional RDBMS uh, I'm, I'm allowed to say traditional, a lot of legacy, people don't like legacy, um, and, <laughs> and, and move it on to HANA, and show how easy it could be, right? Because everyone's like, so oh, this is hard. one side of the street to the other. Old side of the street, Old broken senior. down, yeah. slumming. To, to, to in memory. To like yeah. in memory, right, right. modern, fast. Yeah, and I was there with a uh, good friend Vijay, Vijay Shankar, who's now, who's now, who's worked for IBM at the time, and he's like, yeah, I'll race you to it. Um, now, now IBM, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they didn't want to go there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it turns out, yeah, the optimal were up for the challenge. So yeah, yeah. we said, let's do this. And, and from a race of, of time, we turned it into a race of business value. Right. So what are the, who can bring the, the biggest benefits and just challenge of, you know, it turns out you can do this thing in 90 minutes, right? You can move a system onto HANA in 90 minutes. What are we going to do for the rest of this, the conference? We've got 48 hours to do something new with this information so you that we've got. Well, before <laughs> after 90 minutes, you're like, we're done. Which Start is interesting drinking? that you bring this up because it happened TechEd last year, right? But people are still talking about the HANA race. In fact, I hear some SAP executives like to use that uh, example to show customers how quick and easy it actually can be done. Well, the problem with a lot of the stuff out there, people love to see real stuff happen. Yeah. And with social media, things can really be documented. The other problem, though, is that a lot of these hackathons are kind of bogus, and, and people want to see the real, we call meat on the bone. Right. Um, so, uh, John, you, t you, you run a consultancy with your brother, yeah. and you guys work with only the top HANA, big deployments. So, just share with the folks right now, what is the biggest misconception for HANA? In the, when I say HANA, in the real deployments, like the folks who really need it. You work with the top um, HANA deployments in the world, Vishal and, and the team does keynotes with you guys. You're pretty high profile. Uh, and then, Christoph, I want to go to you, give your perspective, given your experience. Uh, what are the big misconceptions? Yeah, what are, people, well, what are people missing about HANA? Because people are trying to deposition it left and right. You guys obviously are claiming, or EM, SAP's claiming the fastest McDermott's up there saying, you know, a thousand times faster. So these are the stats, put that all aside. But like re the reality of HANA. Well, uh, and there's a lot of misinformation put in by, by both sides of the fence, right? But uh, the biggest misconception, um, is it the probably that deal? HANA isn't a database is what, is what most people say to me most often. Like, it's not really a database, is it? It's just a, a fast thing that makes your things go faster. Um, but, you know, <coughs> the, the reality is HANA is a complete platform of application services and yeah. database, everything. It's, it's the end to end. It, it keeps your information safe, secure, and it makes it fast. So within the SAP world, okay, if you put the dome of SAP around the deployments, and, and Chris, I want you to comment on this because you spent a lot of time at Disney doing SAP, and it's not a small company, right? So these big deployments are very SAP-centric. But now we so. live in a world where right. you, know, you need to do other things. You got cloud, you got mobile, a lot of different touch points. And when HANA was developed, when I talked to Hatsu about it this uh, last year, it was developed years ago before Hadoop, before other things were happening in open source. So uh, what's your take on now, HANA, I buy that, that it's real but dealing with other stuff, how well does it work? Well, what I like about HANA is that it's not a one-fit-all kind of solution, right? SAP understands that. Uh, first of all, SAP understands the whole value uh, proposition discussion, that finding the right use case gets HANA into the door in organizations. That, that is true for Disney or other organizations as well, right? And that's where companies like Bluefin, Bluefin come in. That's what, what John does all day long, right? It's yeah. also a very interesting technology discussion and that addresses your question, right? Yeah, yeah. The way you can deploy HANA, you can start HANA um, outside of the critical path, basically. You can, you can sort of use it as an agile data mart, an old word, but it's still applicable to also HANA. And you can start, once you ramp up the internal knowledge in the company, first you have some help from an outside SI, for example, and you, you ramp up uh, internally in the company, feel more comfortable with the technology, 
understand how to maintain it, run it, operate it in a data center, then you, uh, you can embark on more critical things that, that are within, you know, you're, you're running a business, relying on it. So you're, at, so you're at EMC now, so you, but you had that experience. What are the biggest yeah. challenges, now that you're on that side of the fence, um, you know, the kind of consultancy that, that Bluefin does is pretty high end. I mean, this is not trivial deployments to migrate. You know, the HANA race fun thing is probably really cool and probably relevant. I didn't see the details, but let's take it to the real world, right? You know, some of the things you guys go into. What are, what are some of the use cases? What are some of those high profile, you know, examples where it's challenging and HANA fits the bill? Well, again, I like uh, the use cases on the side that SAP calls the art of the possible, right? Outside of the norm. And there are actually some examples also here on the showroom floor, like McLaren, for example, uses HANA for something very creative. Uh, same is true for Big Point, uh, an online game company who use HANA, and they're not typical SAP customers. They don't use ERP internally, but they are using HANA to do something that they were un unable to do for their business before. So I like to use these kind of use cases because in most organizations that have run HANA or that have run SAP for a, for a while, they don't think of SAP as a hot company that can provide something that un unlocks new business possibilities. Typically it's you know, running your financials, you're running your HR, closing your books, that kind of stuff that is boring but ex essential, right? So bringing that kind of idea to, to businesses who run SAP already for a long time is internally often quite a challenge. I don't know, John, do you see that kind of uh, um, dynamic also in organizations? Yeah, I, I, I think so, and I'm, I'm going to weave in back a couple of misconceptions whilst I do that, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, I, and I was in a room a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sat there with a bunch of people, and I'm just drawing up the HANA vision and, and what's going on. And I stopped and I checked myself, I said to the room, do any, have any of you guys ever used SAP? No. <laughs> uh, do any of you know what SAP is? No. <laughs> do any of you care? No. <laughs> and, and, I, and I realized that um, in the world of big data, uh, people are not interested in, uh, in SAP in itself, right? Yeah. They're not interested in ERP. Yeah. They're interested in analytic problems. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's the second thing is, is a, lot of, a lot of interest in HANA is from um, people that are not interested in, in core, SAP's original core business, the ERP that's side. Good. Uh, and then that brings me to the kind of the third one, and I'll come back to the use cases at this point, which is um, HANA is, is the center of the world for SAP's big, SAP's big data, data story, but it's not the only thing. Um, and for the kind of use cases that we're talking about, um, and uh, Steve Lucas was at the big data event last night talking about um, this use case. I'm trying to get him on for Thursday, by the way. Oh yeah, well. Yeah. Steve, is, he, is he good for the cube or what? Oh yeah, Steve, said he, Steve he is awesome. Do, he oh said yeah, he'd do well here. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, like oh, him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. But he was talking about this same scenario that, we, that we're working on, which is suppose that we want to consume uh, market trading data in real time. Well, we need something to consume that, and SAP has an offering called ESP. That's mm. part of the story. Uh, and we need batch loading as well. So, and SAP has a product called Data Services for that. And and then we need a really fast uh, store for what, what's happening with trades and sentiment. Today we're going to pull data from Twitter, we're going to pull uh, historical weather data, and we're going to consume all of what's happening in the trading world in real time. That's HANA. But also we've got five years of history, and that of course is SAP's uh, column of database, Sybase IQ. And what about all of this uh, sentiment information back to the beginning of time? Well, we integrate with Hadoop, we federate all of that now with HANA, so all of that is available in one model. So, so HANA is part of this story for the use for a use case which is a very high value around, yeah. um, you know, how we predict what trades are going to happen, what, what, where trades are going to move next, yeah. and where markets are going to move. I mean, it's really um, kind of the it's the it's the it's the commingling of multiple use cases. In, in a way, it's a yeah. consolidation. Uh, you mentioned federation. In a way, it is the federation model where you HANA is now a new center of gravity. Exactly. around multiple things. So, hey, I want real-time unstructured data that's that's coming off the web public fear. No problem, bring it in. If I got yeah. <laughs> legacy dark data, as uh, McDermott yeah. ripped off from Gartner, Love no that problem. Time. I mean, yeah. you know, the dark night is returning, you know, and that's <laughs> called the data, right? So I was first thing I thought of was like, you know, but again, this is this is an architectural issue. So, a lot of folks that we talk to on theCUBE say, hey, you know, we've been saying the modern infrastructure is here, and it's not converged infrastructure. It's a new, it's, it's, it's flash. It's new architecture. So how do you guys look at that? When you talk to customers, this modern era is definitely here. What is the key thing? 
What is the key thing around Honor and what else is in that package that you're seeing? I think the answer is you have to create reference architectures for this mm -hmm. stuff that show them how it should be done. And, it, and it's as simple as that. We, you know, we, we need to take, um, it, everything is by industry now, right? It's yeah. by industry, by use. We take a use, we create a reference for that, we understand which products, how they're going to integrate, and then we help these guys on the hardware side um, build uh, hardware solutions that meet that package, and that has to be a package solution. Chris and that's where we come in, exactly. Yeah, talk about that, because <coughs> you're now on the front end, you're on the EMC side, but right. you know, 15 years at Disney, you were the, you know, the legacy side. You were the on-prem king for SAP, right? So right. now you're on EMC, it's clearly laid out an, uh, an in. Well, an in yeah, and it's, it's true, and it's some of the things that I used to rely on uh, from EMC are things uh, along the lines that most architects and in customer uh, installations for HANA are concerned about today. That is high availability, that's data protection, typical backup restore, um, and uh, disaster recovery. So those are areas where EMC and VCE have shined in the past. Yeah. There's, there's, there is, there's a reason for you know, the majority of SAP customers running on EMC storage today. I mean, it's, it's not by chance. Yeah, right? it's funny, we had Brian Gallagher on theCUBE last week at EMC World. He runs the, the supposedly dying Symmetrics business. It grew 10%. <laughs> you know, so it's dying? Like, well, no, that's what the, the naysayers okay. Oh, it's dying, it's yeah, being cannibalized no. by. But what's happening is just the, the overall growth it's still growing as people need to store stuff. They yeah. need to store more and more data. That, that's data to your point. Growing. It's just one federated component of the architecture. Right. It, it is, and this, this is uh, you know, great, so we move to misconception number four, if you like. We can keep going <laughs> here. No, no, we can keep all day <laughs> long, I tell you. Um, which down. is, uh, HANA isn't enterprise ready, especially with the SP6 release, which is coming. Mm. Allegedly, these features are coming, I think. Yeah, I hear that. Probably thing. not allowed yeah. to say, uh, yeah. say solidly, but uh, <laughs> you know, for me, the remainder of the enterprise-y stuff is, is done now. You know, high availability, disaster recovery, point in time, all of, all of, the, all of the things that you would expect of a, of a database existence in HANA and sometimes people say they don't exist but but now I think it's there's really a full suite you can back up from your your um, disaster recovery node now which right. is a big thing for yeah. people you can you can stick all your researchers on that other system if you'd like to um, because uh, they slow down this one with all their difficult questions so, so yeah John, it's all I want to get your perspective I want to uh, I wanted to ask Christoph first we had mm -hmm. Henrik on earlier from uh, EMC and you know, we talked again about um, you know, this idea of speed and performance, a lot of the benchmarking that's been kicked around, whether you, it's Pivotal, Greenform <coughs> on the EMC side or someone else, everyone always has that benchmark. And Greenform put out a benchmark uh, before Strata saying, oh, we are a zillion times faster than, than Impala, which is Cloudera's version of real time, which has its own issues, but you know, Greenform isn't pristine, clean even themselves. <laughs> so, um, and they know that, so um, you know, there's no, no damage done there. Uh, but Pivotal's going to take that all in. Um, the data issue, right? So data matters. Where the data is affects the benchmark. Absolutely. So how does HANA, is HANA like a, are, they, are the benchmarks all in memory? You got to move data around? Do you push the processors where the data is? Where does virtualization fit into? But, how uh, does I that think, all, yeah, I think, all I think, come together? Sorry, I think it, it depends at the end of the day on the, on the use case and the prior priority of the data, how it relates to the use case for the customer. And that, that's different for, for every installation, or it can be different for every installation. Um, I, I like to use the, the analogy of the time value of data, although time may not be the only metric that is of interest uh, to move data from one you know, location, if you will, to another um, over time. Traditionally, however, that's uh, a, a pretty good analogy. So if you will, um, uh, data that, that's applicable to the running business right now um, has a shorter period of time, uh, time to live, right? Yeah. It's more more um, aligned with uh, um, the technology that HANA provides. Data that is much larger in nature and maybe in itself doesn't um, add the, the requirement of the time element in its own uh, use case may be applicable to something like what Pivotal does or Hadoop. Um, little, you know, not everybody knows that HANA and Hadoop actually work quite nicely together, especially with SP6, right? Yeah, and so, so I love that time value uh, of data because that's truly relevant. Latency. Absolutely. I mean, people. We had a big discussion uh, uh, two shows ago about IOPS versus latency. Yeah. Completely different metrics depending on what you're looking at. Right. You know, so, so latency <laughs> matters. And I'd, I'd frame that almost s slightly differently in HANA terms to how uh, how a green plum or or an teaser would explain this, which is uh, with HANA we always store data at the most granular level, right? So we don't aggregate, and we know how fast we can aggregate, right. and, and the number is. 12.5 to 13 million aggregations a second per core. 
So based upon how many aggregations you I need mean, to do, and you just think need about to know, that. That's just, awesome. <laughs> it, it's, am, it's amazing when you see it. And, and just to put that in context, like on a, on a small HANA appliance like this, that means that if you've got, uh, let's say, bank transactions, and you've got three billion of them, in two seconds, you can calculate the total average spend for all transactions there. I mean, and so all you need to figure out is how many calculations do you need? It's how big a box do you need? It's almost unplausible people don't even understand it. It's like, yeah. no, it's not real, right. I don't believe yeah, it. There's no, a lot of doubting Thomases out there. No, when people see it the first time, that's what happens. They say, no, that's, that doesn't, that's not true. Every time. So that's why the sales guys use Amazon, so they can get the POCs up and running, so they can see as much as possible how fast. Well, uh, and the enterprise right. cloud now, where you can have much bigger systems. Yeah. In Amazon, you're limited to, to like 64. Right, so let's but so again, to get back to your question originally about benchmarks, right? Mm. Um, I think from a customer perspective, and I used to be a customer for a very long time, in the decision process, and figuring out what is the right tool, who is the right partner, there are a bunch of different um, points of you know, criteria, if you will, that um, formulate, formulates a yeah. decision. Um, benchmarks is not the answer to everything. It is one uh, criteria, it is uh, an informative one, but it's... It's a sizzle, not the Right, state. exactly. It's, it's, it's one point in your collection of, of data yeah. um, that, that helps you, you to door. make up like, your okay, mind. It gets you okay, you got yeah. my attention. Right. Now so you're either going to... Yeah. <laughs> get kicked out on your butt, yeah. or you can take the next step right. Right. Yeah. with the and benchmark. As you said, and impressive. That's it. And the big thing with HANA, and this is what, what we try and display every time, is it, you can get the information in, in near real time, and you can aggregate on it at the same time. So if you can get the information in, you can ask the questions at the speed of thought. And that's really the limiting factor, is can you get it in, and can you formulate so the, the right question? the only bottleneck in that equation, and based on the benchmarks, which I haven't seen, I haven't looked at, I'd love to come in and check it out at SAP, uh, labs so I can see it for myself. Um, <laughs> even though he invited me up to Palo Alto, and I live in Palo Alto, I should be up there. But yeah, it's, right. it's really architecture. So what How is many the bottleneck? Calls? What is the bottleneck for folks? I mean, it's all, it's like it's like the miracle drug, right, for IT. So what is well, the bottleneck to this? Why aren't people just trampling down SAP's door, or are they? Well, they have a thousand customers in yeah. 18 months, right? So, but it, 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 I think it's a, it's again <laughs> the idea that something that revolutionary that that it can be attractive to businesses running SAP or not running SAP comes from SAP. I think that is a hurdle that SAP themselves um, are you know about to overcome. You know, with this yeah, this yeah. HANA solution, and they got a, the messaging has got to be tightened up on how it fits. I think architectural reference designs are yeah. still a little early, but I think that's what what I'm finding is people trying to figure out okay, where does it fit? Is it a square peg in the round hole, or is it you know they can shape it any way they want? And HANA seems to be elusive that way. You could actually move it any way you want. You mentioned people use it for not even have, have SAP. Correct. Yeah, I think there is a couple of things that that uh, will will make a big difference in the next year on HANA. I mean, uh, first of all, you have to reformulate your questions quite often. You, the questions have to be able to parallelize, right? So so the mo so you have to build a model that works. And that, and that can be challenging. Um, and the second thing is that from a hardware perspective, uh, the current generation of hardware wasn't built for in-memory solutions. The next generation, which I think there's some of those kicking around that are coming, those are truly built for in-memory solutions. Yeah. And they're smaller, they're cheaper, uh, and, and all the hardware, we're going to have Don Basile on Thursday, he's the CEO of Violin Memory Systems, and uh, right. you know, Fusion I.O. obviously they had a little management problems at the top there, They're, they've shifted over, but now Violin and Fusion, they've proven that you put server-side flash, architecturally opens up a lot of creative opportunities for, for technologists. Yeah, although actually Hunter in Hana, the same way. In Hana it's kind of the opposite with, yeah. with, with Hana because um, <laughs> flash is an overkill. You, you only need the disk right. of persistence. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So I got there's, there's some data areas that benefit from it, but not not everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't need flash. Correct. Um, yeah. So, but the, the answer again, uh, like your questions, you asked the question about the bottleneck, right? Yeah. In the past, for you call them traditional uh, database systems, in the past, right? The bottleneck used to be between compute and storage, right? Um, and it, has, it required a lot of performance tuning, uh, buffer pool hit rate ratios and things of that nature, laying out the data correctly across spindles, all that kind of stuff. Well, if that is out of the equation, the next bottleneck that we now see with HANA is basically between cache and memory. Data transfer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about all about getting, data. getting data closer to CPU cycles. And it's, you know, it's all the traditional 
think of L1 to a three you start a whole other economics class, uh, Christoph, t the uh, future value of data. Yeah. You know, we can do a little, you know, and, and math fact, on that. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I, I wrote something together with Gar Gardner on that very topic. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm passionate about that too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then I, I'll go start with a question for both of you. Start with John. What was hmm. the most amazing thing you've done with HANA? The most amazing thing. <sighs> Uh, I'm curious. Yeah, can, can I talk about it? Is the <laughs> question. Okay. Yeah, um, Generalized. Uh, John Doe and <laughs> I, I think this one that we're we're working on at the minute is 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 amazing, which is which is around financial services and the speed of thought, uh, the one that calculating the balances of all the transactions. It, it, actually, I mean that I I love that one because it's such a great example. Because they came to me and they said, it, it's not running that fast on Hannah, and I said, well, th there's a reason for this. You need to your design is not quite right for it. And it had been taking quite a while to run. And then, like I said, this, the so balance what were they doing? Taking the data coming in, can you explain that? Uh, what are they doing wrong? Yeah, no, what were they doing with the product? What's, what was the solution? Oh, the, 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 the solution is around ad hoc, ad hoc analysis for transactional data in, in financial services. Real-time financial data, uh, or not near real-time? Generally, it doesn't really matter. In, in, for, for analysts, um, it they're not. transactional data, like, like Tra like transactional data, but uh, but t taken in overnight because actually they're doing kind of research questions oh, okay. rather than real time questions. So, right, so it's, it's not it's time critical. It's the bulk of, of data that's pretty recent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Recent, yeah, up to up to the day. And yeah. you know, you want que ask questions around uh, you know average balances, uh, time, demographics. So free form questions. Free form no, questions. No modeling. No front end stuff. Just. Like a Google search engine. Yeah, like like that exactly. Yeah. And um, not run the the BI query from you know the not meeting we had. Yeah. Right. No. No. no not the exactly. dark data right. query. It, they don't know the questions they want to ask, yeah. and they want to join. They want the flexibility to join. So I suppose you want to join the weather data uh, for the last five years. Yeah, Let's I mean, pull that people, in. Most people get to the right question after they've asked a few questions. That's wrong, the, the wrong principle, oh yeah, right? Time. Right. Yeah. yeah. To your data point. That's you know, okay. You fumble through. It's kind of like okay, that didn't work. Give me another one. And then you kind of get the creative juices going. Yeah. Exactly, and they want to be able to do and some so of the stuff themselves. And so the most amazing thing was what? Well, the most amazing thing, I think, <laughs> was the realization that they, they really can ask a question across five years of transactional data, and they can get an answer in a couple of seconds, and they can just keep asking. Uh, I don't think they believed that when they saw <laughs> that. It's like, well, I can, I can see average spend by customer, by, by sex, by okay. demographic, by area. Did and you I get can to visualize see the people's that. faces when they were doing the queries, or did that, you were not I wasn't exposed. there, unfortunately. Yeah, you saw the, didn't, didn't no. see the, the positive That would have been feedback. interesting, yeah. I, I would like okay, to your most that. amazing thing that you've done with HANA, or been involved in? Yeah, well, I, I think the most amazing thing that actually happens right now, I, I can't talk about it. The Cube, I know, it's pretty odd. <laughs> I know, exactly, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's also something <laughs> innovative in the, in the financial space uh, that, that we're doing, and um, there's, there's a huge, huge interest, um, I would say, um, because the analysis of of numbers has immediate value to these financial companies. So that from a business perspective, that drives a lot of interest, right? So I yeah. can't really talk about the details, yeah, yeah. but aside from that, um, I think we, we worked also together with uh, Bluefin um, on something with uh, VCE, right? Yeah, and we've been having some fun with that. And, and yeah. we said basically, what well, let's take like a really in easy, what should be a really easy example for people to understand, which is, you know, Bluefin runs SAP, we run a Wall to wall, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. little, little <laughs> got that checked off. <laughs> right, check the box. <laughs> yeah, and, new to sink and your we teeth have into. a few processes which are which are challenged. Doesn't everyone, right? Probably our big ones, our planning process, because all of our resource management is done in SAP BPC. What about orchestration? I mean, that's a hard problem when you're dealing, you know, at the VCE part of BCE. You got BCE, and you got all these deployments. How are you managing this, the orchestration across all the systems? Uh, orchestration of of the of the code. So if I'm a developer, I don't want to. If I'm a developer, I don't want to actually. I want to write. I'm writing an app. I want to manage all the infrastructure and orchestrate all my services across the infrastructure. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to use a little Han. I want some speed. I want some this. So I'm, I'm actually a developer. Infrastructure as code or the DevOps kind of mindset. Uh, you, you any, that's any a good question. That? I'm in the space of SAP. Um, I mean, traditional SAP, you're really bound to, to ABAP. Still, I mean, SAP tried Java, it really didn't take off that much, so ABAP is the answer there. In the, in the space of HANA, it opens up a lot of you know, other opportunities. And, um, We've seen a lot of developer startup action. I mean, you know, I right. the SAP startup guys are like, oh yeah, they're trying to fund HANA startups. Have you seen any hot startups come out of the HANA space? Um, I'm, I'm not aware of any, but... Uh, um, John, have you seen any? 
There are a bunch of them. I'm, I, I'm going to get in trouble here because I should be paying attention <laughs> to this stuff because <laughs> I know these guys, know those guys really well. No, well you're, I know um, you. I'm busy on other stuff. But, I, but I, yeah. I, I, I talked to one last night I thought was Don't, don't, don't was kick quite yourself too hard. You're oh. working on some pretty high-end stuff. There was one I was talking to last night that was pretty cool and, and we had a, a short conversation and um, he told me how they were doing um, refuse disposal or recyclables. So you can tell it yeah, there's an iPhone app you can download. If I could, I could, only I could remember the name of the startup. <laughs> <laughs> Branding <laughs> but, problem. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But I spoke to him briefly. And, and basically, you open up the app and you tell it, um, what do you want? Uh, so I've got a, you know, I want to recycle this MacBook Air. It's, it's not very good. Um, so, uh, and it'll tell you where you can recycle that. And they're looking, from what I understood, to monetize that by taking that out to the suppliers like HP and, and so on, and then using that that big data information that they're gaining from the customers to help the um, suppliers um, sort of re refill. You know, you should really buy a, a new toner now. I see you just recycled one, for instance. Uh, using the power of HANA to, to give them uh, analytics on, on that. I, I thought that was interesting. And, well, and you guys are, are working together. Obviously, the, the uh, HANA race we had mentioned is some of the cool things you guys do at, at events, and that was really kind of demonstrate the value, kind of give kind of a face to HANA. Um, if just in summary, our last question for both of you guys is, you know, talk about, um, just for the average person out there who's trying to figure out what this is all about, mm. HANA, and what it means. Not just the geeky stuff, but what, you, what it enables. You guys are exposed to some pretty high-end use cases and pretty intoxicating when you think about some of the new creative things that are happening. What would you share with them around, peek around the corner and give them a little view of what you think's happening with this trend and what's going to enable? Um, so, I actually send customers all the time to SAP websites. Um, because um, I mentioned earlier, this, uh, this I call it the, the time, or, or the, the, the value dynamic uh, between HANA as a technology and HANA as a business, you know, business value and uh, driving new revenue and things like that, increasing customer satisfaction and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, SAP obviously realizes that and has made available uh, a website that you know, everybody who is in the field of HANA probably should know, and it's saphana.com, very simple. I like that website because of two reasons. One, there are specific success stories, little videos out there that, that show what customers have done with HANA, what is possible on, you know, more on the creative side. Secondly, there is a, a, a growing list of use cases that are organized by industry verticals. Um, you know, one of the SAP mentors, uh, um, Rukshan Omar, she is managing, basically, uh, she's the gatekeeper of all these use cases. Organized by industry verticals, um, researched well, documented, just high level ideas mm -hmm. to spawn sort of the discussion, what is possible with HANA. At the end of the day, sure, the technology may be interesting to people like us, um, but it doesn't matter, right? The business case solves um, a problem or generates a new business, uh, um, revenue stream, if you will, um, and that's where I think the meat of the conversation is to be drawn first. And well, what do you personally like? I mean, from a personal perspective, you've had a, a, a storied career in IT, and you've seen old school project management, big deployments, a lot of integrations. You know, a lot of people made a lot of dough, right? Yeah. And no. kind of the value was, was months, now what, it's weeks. So, yeah. so there's a new market here, right? It's accelerated all around. So what, what, I, what, what I like for, for IT organizations specifically about HANA is it gives IT organizations a, a tool or a message to be more relevant to the business, right? Uh, IT organizations throughout industries struggle with the fact that they try to get out of the Nike swoosh job description, just do it, right? Yeah. And, and try, try to add more value to the business. Well, the business may not be available or aware um, of a tool called SAP HANA at what it can do. That's why I like these websites so much, because they help IT organizations to educate themselves and they can engage the business, draw business people in, draw IT people in, draw data people in, and have more creative workshops internally before they reach out, for example, to SAP or their favorite SI on uh, value discovery workshops. Great, awesome. John, you, you, you kind of have a, a rope, you're pulling customers into the future, you had to go into the future a little bit in your mind, see the, around the corner to kind of visualize these architectures. What would you share with the folks out there around, you know, What's the cool things you're seeing that could be possible that yet have not been formed in terms of opportunities? I, I think the if I think of the biggest challenge with HANA, right, is it is uh, a la it is making that journey to understand 
what you could do with it. So that's the big challenge. And they talk about it as being a non-disruptive technology, and, and I'm not with SAP on this. HANA is, is a non-disruptive technology, but it's a technology which, which can disrupt markets. And, uh, and that I think we haven't really seen yet. And the things that you can do with it will, will blow your mind when you get there. People get afraid when they see something they don't understand, and it's when, they, when it's, it's always the same question, what do I, what can I, what do, I do with this? So what what like can a, you do with it? A new weapon, a new opportunity, a new tool. And I, and I think the real value, and I, and I think McDermott got it really great today when he brought uh, NBA in particular on stage, right? Which is, is humanizing data. Um, because you, this, this NBA information, it's, it's so easy to understand. Awesome. As, as an individual, and yeah. I think um, people can relate to fantasy football and, yeah. and stats, and, and yeah. having stuff at the fingertips when they're watching a the game, yeah. or knowing, hey, pull the guy out; he tends to choke in the fourth quarter. <laughs> right. Know? Yeah. And I think that the <laughs> real that up there yeah. from the Jed York. No, that was funny, wasn't yeah. it? But I, but I think <laughs> the, the like, real yeah. disruption in the markets is going to come from the humanization of that information and, yeah. and what change it brings. Humanization, guys. Great conversation. Uh, I'd like to go more. Uh, we could go more, but we have to do a wrap up towards the end of the day. It's already, you know, pushing uh, 20 to 6 here on the East Coast. Uh, John Appleby and uh, Christoph Struber. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Appreciate it. Thanks. We'll be right back after this uh, break from the wrap up inside the Cube. Uh, we got EMC and we got uh, Hana here having some great conversations. We'll be right back live from Sapphire to Silicon Angles exclusive coverage. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back. <laughs>